Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. So, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add custom components to your Dash AG grid table. In this graph here, we, we're adding a cell button, a Dash, well, HTML button with the color purple that will reset the money column to zero, assuming the person sold all their investment. And in this uh, Dash app, we are adding a scatter plot inside one of the Dash EG grid columns called graphing. So you have a scatter plot, and we'll see also that if we click on one of these scatter markers, we can get information to use for other components or other interactivity inside our Dash app. So this uh, video is based on this uh, Dash AG Grid documentation written by Anne Marie, which is a, a, a reflection of the um, AG Grid uh, React um, table and documentation. We'll focus on the custom cell render um, chapter. All right, and you have here. Uh, I really recommend that you that you read this chapter. It's very interesting. It's it's very enriching, and will um, give you a lot of good information. But also, it will give you more examples of how to add links, how to add um, other types of of buttons like bootstrap button, how to add a checkbox, uh, also images. Uh, so the really helpful examples here, but we'll focus on the button and on the graph to explain a little bit about it. So as always, go into the GitHub link under the video uh, to follow along. It will be easier. Click into the custom components. And here you should probably download these two files, everything in here. And in the assets folder, download this uh, JavaScript file. Right, but make sure it's in the assets folder. So it should look like this: dash uh, custom components, and then you have an assets folder, and then in in the custom components uh, root folder, you have the button and table and the graph and table file. Okay. All right, so let's get started with the button and table uh, dot pi file. This app right here. Right, it's going to look like this. This is the button and table. Uh, file. Now, let's explain this. How can we add the button? So, the first thing we do here is, is pretty basic. We're just importing all the libraries. We're um, adding the cyborg uh, bootstrap theme. That's why it's a little bit dark, black. Um, we're going to use this data, the same data I used from the last four videos about Dash AG Grid. You know, see so you have five, six different columns here with different rows. And then we're going to create the invest gr uh, column, right? This data set only has these columns, stock market, objective source, stock market, objective source. It does not have the invest column, but we're going to put the button inside the invest column. So I created the invest column. It just has the word sell in each, in each row under the column. And then I'm going to turn the word cell into, into a button, right? So the way to do that is um, to make note of two important things. The custom React button component inside the JavaScript file and the column definition um, uh, column where you want to add that component. So in this case, we are adding the button component to the invest column. And this is the last column of the column definition um, list of dictionaries. So we're going to call this column invest, invest. The idea will be invest. And then you want to assign the word button to the cell renderer key. Now this is always the same, cell renderer and cell renderer parameters. These are keys that belong inside the column definitions, right? That at the end, we are going to assign to the column definition property of dash AG grid. So in this case, we assign the word button. Now where is this coming from? If you assign the word buttons or my button, this will not work. You have to assign button because button is the actual function right here 
in the JavaScript file where we create the HTML button element using um, using React, right? So make sure that you have the word button here, and then with cell render parameters, you can also influence or change um, Bootstrap classes. In this case, we're changing the color. The color is info. And the color info in the cyborg theme is the color purple. We can change the size. So if this is a small button, we can also do space, BTN, uh, size will be large. And now if we refresh, you see the button is large or small. We can change it to small or anything we want. So these are just bootstrap classes, dash bootstrap classes in this cell render parameters. But the most important thing is to add this word to the cell renderer inside the column where we want to add the button. Okay? Now, this this is a little bit of a React here. If you don't know React, don't worry about it. React is not too complicated, so you can always start learning, take a course for a couple of days, and, and you'll know to create, uh, you'll understand to, how to read this. But even if you do not do that, it doesn't matter that much because this is this is already given to you, right? This um, function to create a button HTML element or to create a DCC, a dash core component graph element that we'll use in this other file. This is already given to you, right? So all you have to do is make sure that you copy and use this in your uh, Dash app. This uh, first line of code will always remain the same. Here you are creating a dash, you're registering a dash uh, um, a namespace inside dash AG grid. So this always stays the same. This will stay the same because this is the variable that we created. And then here we are attaching the, um, the key value, this part right here. Listen very well, remember this very well because I forgot this and it took me like 20 minutes to understand what's going on. This uh, function right here, this key right here, uh, word right here and right here is what is going to be assigned to the cell renderer key of the column definition. Don't forget. So this is button, right? And here we're, we're creating the DCC uh, underscore graph click data. So when, when we do it in the graph, We'll see all the way down here, cell render, DCC graph click data. All right? So that's it. We created our, our button. We inserted our button inside this column. And now we assign the column definitions to a column definition parameter of AG grid. And this is how we get our dash app with a button in the invest column. Now, a little trick here is we're clicking on the button and this will actually pull the click data. This is the, see here there's some, there's some on click event that's going on here, the on click event. So we're pulling this information and we're gonna um, spit it out and um, make the money uh, column zero whenever this is clicked on. So here we have our uh, the ID of our AG grid table, portfolio table, this is the ID. And we're going to um, update the row data para, uh, property. The row data property of the table is what takes all the data into the table, right? This is actually the, the, the complete data of the table. So this is what we're going to update. Now we're going to take the component property of the table as an input will take the cell renderer data. Now this cell renderer data is a data that comes from from this from this column right here, the invest column. And what it's doing, if you just print it out, what it's doing, we'll rerun this, it's actually printing out the data of the button. So let's see, refresh, cell, we'll click this one. This is the row zero, row one. And now you see, this is the end that we printed. Print N, which is the cell renderer data. We have column ID, we have row ID, and we have a timestamp. And so the row ID is row one, and this is very, very valuable information because when we convert this row ID from a string to an integer, we have the number one, right? This is equal to, to one. 
we have the number one and then we can create this new feature in dash patch to update the row the row data uh, information all the data that goes into our into our table with one line of code we can update all this information now this is a bit more advanced it's using the patch uh, feature that's available from dash 2.9.2 onwards I'm not going to although it's it's only one line of, of code I'm not necessarily going to go into it too deeply right now because I'm going to make a whole new video of how to use uh, the patch to update information like this in this case it doesn't matter that much we only have about what is this like 20 rows 30 rows but when when you have uh, tables that have thousands of rows using the patch will make your app a lot faster Okay, so this is our, our Python um, button uh, app. Now let's go into the graph, graph in table um, Python file, right? This is a file in GitHub. You can go into graph in table and you'll see this right here. And this is so cool because in this AG grid table, we have a scatter plot. We can put a histogram. We can put many things in here and we can get the information of this of the markers or, or the mouse that's uh, clicking on it how do we do this so going to the graph um, in table file we're importing all our libraries using the cyborg theme using the same is this the same data or is it different fine answer yeah using the same data here we're just creating a subset of the data we're grouping by the objective there's uh, three different objectives in the whole data set you'll see here objective retirement plan retirement health care and education there's three different objectives so we're going to group by because i don't want in this table i don't want to display all the rows inside the age degree table i just want to display three rows so these three rows are going to be um we're going to achieve these three rows by grouping by objective so we'll have education healthcare and retirement plan and then we'll take the average of money and age columns or data and pertaining to each to each objective so the average age in the education uh, field is 25 the average amount of money a person makes with uh, I guess education um, uh, in their in their uh, investment objective is 40 459,000 is that right yeah nice amount of money um, so now that we grouped it by we only have three rows we're going to um, just clean it up a little bit so it's just one number and not 25.99999 and we're going to update the names of the columns from age to average age and average money like this and that's it and then we're going to put this inside the the column definitions average money average age and inside our the subset inside our ag grid table right so this is how we have our three columns one two three now the original data set does not have this data set does not have the graphing column and we want to create a graphing column or whatever you call it because we want to insert uh, uh, a scatter plot a graph in each row so we'll create uh, a graphing column in this subset uh, data set and it's going to be empty for now and then we're going to create this for loop to create a scatter plot for each and every row inside our table All right but before we do that remember just like the button where we added career uh, cell renderer button here we'll go into the dash ag grid JavaScript file and we'll see that the function here is DCC underscore click data so we have to add this to the cell renderer of the column definitions list so here we have our graphing column cell renderer and then we assign it the DCC graph and click data right this is actually um, inside the JavaScript file we also have um, click data here that's built for us and we also take the um, uh, display mobile false so we don't have the plotly logo 
uh, kind of cool what 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 the uh, the kind of graph element they created here. All right, so we have our our click data here in the cell renderer. Now we want to build the graph. So here, what we're doing is we're saying for IR in the subset data set, we're going to iterate over the rows. There's only three rows, right? Because we we group them. We're going to take the first the first I will be zero, and the first R will be education, because that's the first um, uh, subset. And we're going to say, filter the original data frame with all the rows, so the objective will be equal to uh, the, the objective of this data set. And you can even print, print R and see what happens for each loop. Um, and you'll see, let's print it out. You'll see the first R is a whole thing. R objective is, where is it? Uh, education. This first R is education. So we're going to filter the full uh, data frame to only have education rows. This would probably be like, I don't know, five different rows. And we're going to create the scatter plot with all these full uh, rows with education. Age on the X axis, money on the Y axis, gender, right? We update the layout. We don't want to have a legend, no x-axis, no y-axis, because we're just we're limited with space here. So we're taking away the y-axis and x-axis, takes away the legend, the title, and just keep this bare bone graph, right, with the scatter markers. And then we're going to add this figure that we created, the scatter plot, to the subset data at row zero in the graphing column. The next loop will filter the full data frame with the healthcare objective, right? To only have rows of healthcare objective, the full data frame. So there's a few with um, healthcare objective, right? You can see here, actually we can do health, 13 of them, healthcare objective. Filter it, uh, plot the, the, create the scatter uh, graph, scatter plot with all this full data frame with age and money update the layout and add this graph to the second i equals one not zero but i equals one inside the graphing column so that's how you end up with three different graphs on three different rows cool isn't it and now because the javascript file also has some click data that it can register let's activate this callback and you can see that we'll take the the HE grid table uh, cell renderer data, just like we did in the in the button, cell renderer data, we'll take this as, as an input, we'll call it D, and we're just going to print it out. We're in inside our app. We're going to print it and put it inside the children of this empty div. This is an empty div. Under the table, we're going to put here this, this information. So now you see it's null because we didn't click on anything, but when we click on this one, age 27, money 0 0.98, click it. Now you see you have all this beautiful information. X27, Y 984,000, which is 0 0.98 uh, million, right? You have the row ID, click on this, click on this, row index one. It's kind of cool, we have all this information um, by clicking on this data. And this information, you can drill into it and you can extract whatever you want to extract, point number or X and Y, and you can use this information in a different callback to um, filter other graphs, other tables, or do whatever you want with it. Cool. So that is it. I hope uh, it wasn't too long, but I really wanted to, to um, help you understand how to add these custom components to your, to your edgy table make sure to go over this documentation there's a few other very cool examples here of of other elements that are created inside uh, javascript and react and added to the uh, dash ag grid table good luck i hope it works out for you as always um, always remember we're better together so help each other out always help each other out all right have a good one all right